Hi everyone. Hope everybody's doing well. We're going to look at the energies for this week. Um, real quick, the stuff that's going on in the sky. First, I want you guys to check out the awesome t-shirt that I'm wearing. You can get it on my website. The link is below. You can either go directly to the t-shirt the store website or you can go to my website, fearlessintuition.net. Click on the merch link at the top of the page and it'll lead you to that. You can also get coffee mugs and stuff too. The reason why I'm wearing this particular shirt though is because this is a week <laughs> to remember that everything is figure outable because the sun in Aries is going to be connecting and having aspects and squares to Saturn, Pluto, Jupiter. Mercury and Jupiter are also going to be um, in a, sorry, in a trine. So I'm like, I'm like trying to think about what I'm trying to say here. Um, so, oh, it's a square, sorry, square with Mercury. That's why I couldn't figure it out because they're, they're like all these squares that are happening this week, Mercury and Jupiter will be doing that as well. Things might be a little exaggerated. Things might get a little bit out of control. You have to remember when the sun is in Aries, there's a feeling of really wanting to get things done and really like pushing forward. I um, got sick again this week and I was really hoping it wasn't happen, wasn't going to happen. Like um, my kids got the flu and pneumonia during March and I was like, oh my gosh, I got through all of that, didn't get sick, nothing. But it is like running rampant through the city. I probably left the house once in the last couple of weeks and um, still ended up getting sick. So, and I'm like a stickler for like making sure my hands are washed and everything and it's still anyways. Um, could have been much worse, could have turned out much worse, but I really took care of myself this time, which is a lesson that I've been having to learn. And I think that's why I've been getting sick more than usual is like, have you learned your lesson? Have you learned your lesson? This time, what probably could have been like a week and a half sickness ended up being like three days. And I was miserable for a couple of them. I forced myself to change my schedule. And because during airy season, it's really hard to force yourself to sit and rest. And if you don't follow me on Twitter, then you didn't get all the, the lovely, fun things that I put on Twitter um, while I was uh, laying down and resting. So if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's Betsy. It's um, B, the number three, T-S-Y, and then the number 33. So Betsy is spelled out, but the E in Betsy is a number three, and then there's a 33 after the Y. So... Um, also was on Instagram a lot too. So, and that's Fearless Intuition 1111. Um, let's see. So all my notes are down here. That's why I keep looking down. Um, there's just a lot that the sun is going to be doing. So on Wednesday, we have Saturn squaring off with the sun. And um, this could actually like um, bring on a, a lesson that, I mean, like you can really count on learning a lesson with this. Because the sun is going to be illuminating, um, you know, Saturn's like karma. Saturn is, is, is the planet of learning the lesson. It's in its home sign. Um, Saturn will be going retrograde later this month. But this week, as it squares off, the sun is going to be really illuminating um, a very harsh lesson that you've probably had to learn over and over and over again. Um, and it's just coming out brighter. Sorry, I'm going to cough. It's just being illuminated more. Jupiter also goes retrograde on Wednesday for four months. So Jupiter will be retrograde. And while the time that Jupiter is retrograde um, in Sagittarius, this is a time for you to kind of take a step back and allow, to, allow yourself to see um, what it is where you're, you are disconnected from faith and hope and trusting the universe and um because um jupiter is supposed to be bringing gifts right and because it's in its home sign of sagittarius but what happens first is sometimes you have to have things removed out of your life before jupiter actually presents you with the gift you need to make room you need to make space if you're holding on to things people places and things that aren't serving you jupiter's like there's just not enough room for me to give you anything right now. So we got to move all of this stuff out and not just put it in storage for later, 
but actually like shove it out. I just had like this epiphany thought when that happened, when I said that, that's so amazing. Um, so not just like hold things for a later date to take care of at a later date, but actually have it removed out of your life and allowing it to be removed out of your life is a really big thing. And then trusting that the universe is going to take care of you. You have four months. You have four months to reconnect with the hope and the faith that good things are coming. And um, if so, if you're feeling like you just keep on trying and keep on trying and keep on trying and nothing is coming for you and nothing and it doesn't feel like anything's going to be taken care of and and nothing, you know, you're like, I'm not going to get the gifts that Jupiter's supposed to bring me. This is a time for you to really reconnect with yourself and allow yourself to remember um, that it's not always that easy. It's not just going to, like, you can't win the lottery without buying the ticket. You can't get the job without doing the work. You can't, like, things don't just, like, I didn't have, I don't have a wonderful life because it was easily just handed to me on a silver platter. I worked my butt off for all of this, and then the magic happened. Then I started getting things that I, in my wildest dreams, never guessed that I would get. And things just started happening. And a lot of that has to come into alignment. And this Jupiter retrograde is going to teach a lot of people how to come back into alignment and have hope and faith that, that where you are right now in the present and where you want to be in the future are two completely different things. You have to be aligned with the present in order to get to the future. Which brings me to, um, I will only be like in starting May 1st, I'm not taking um, personal readings anymore. The only personal readings, there will be limited number of personal readings I'll be taking. I'll be taking um, emergency personal readings and I will be taking personal readings for Taurus and Aries because it's for their birthday specials. So only those two signs. And then, you know, of course, when we get to Gemini season, Gemini's will also get the birthday special too. I'm also still offering the one-on-one -on -one alignment coaching session. So that's what I was talking about here. You have to be aligned with your present in order to get to the future. You can't be aligned with the future that doesn't even exist yet. You can't be aligned with the future that you keep on hoping for and keep on hoping for and keep on hoping for if you're not aligned with where your path is right now and what you're supposed to be doing in the now. If you're constantly searching for something, it's because you're not in alignment. And that's what I really help with. And this means relationships, jobs, location, um, everything. Everything you can possibly think of. How, how do I manifest a future if I can't manifest a now and feel good about it? So my one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions are still available to do that it, uh, after April 30th. I have only like 15 openings left for readings in, in April. That's it. Um, they're going to be filled up really fast. I'm trying to get everybody in as much as possible. I have a feeling they'll be filled up this week. So if you want to get in for a reading and you're not a Taurus or an Aries, I suggest you get those in May if you'd like, um, or you can get them now, whatever. Um, but, uh, if you're not a Taurus or an Aries, then I suggest you, and you want to get a reading, do it now because they're going to be, I'm not going to be taking any other like personal readings, um, or you can do the emergency ones, and we'll t I'll, I'll give you that information later. Um, Thursday the 11th is the Mercury-Jupiter square. So there could be some exaggerations on, like, pro over-promising things. Mercury and Jupiter have had a lot of interaction in the last couple of months in Pisces, when Mercury, Mercury was in Pisces. Um, and there, there's, um, the perception of things could be really, really off. Like your thought processes and percep like people could say one thing to you and you, you could take it as an insult and it wasn't supposed to be an insult. So, and that energy will probably last like two or three days. So really allow yourself to kind of like rein yourself in. Don't jump to conclusions. Everything is figure outable. Don't jump to conclusions. Um, then we have the sun squaring with Pluto on Saturday, April 13th. That is a struggle of power because Aries is the warrior, right? The sun and the warrior. And then Pluto, um, is change and is also all about power. It rules Scorpio. Mars also rules Scorpio and Mars rules Aries. 
So there is going to be a struggle of power because when the sun squares Pluto, it's like, I, I mean, like this whole week could be just lost in you, like the ego, like could really, really get lost in the ego. If you don't watch your P's and Q's, um, I am allowing my, because, and everybody's been really aggressive lately anyways, because we had, what was it? The, the Pluto South Node conjunction we had and that that energy lasts for weeks but that happened like a week and a half ago um but just because of that like there was super super aggression before that all of this miscommunication that's going on is happening for a reason because you're really having to learn how to control yourself and you're really having to learn how to control how other people are treating you and triggering you and you're controlling your boundaries when it comes to that um, so I want you to be ultra aware of what you're allowing in your space and how you're, you're allowing other people to affect you and take a deep breath. And if somebody triggers you, don't get into the argument. If, if it's not worth it to you, or if it's just a big confusion, walk away, come back to it later. If somebody pisses you off, um, there was like, somebody had, had sent me an email and it kind of triggered me and I was like, whoa, no, I'm not, I'm not going to waste my energy on somebody else's ego. Like my energy is way more important than your ego is the way that I look at it. That's like one of the tweets I actually put out last week. So allowing myself to come out of my ego and say, no, 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 no. I don't need to be involved in this. This is not my fight. This is their fight. And you also have to kind of turn the mirror onto yourself because if people are projecting things onto you, what kind of energy are you putting out? Um, it's not, you can't always blame other people for triggering you. Sometimes people are saying things or doing things and it's not even like supposed to be a trigger, but you're taking it as a trigger. So sometimes you have to really be aware of how you are allowing yourself to be perceived and perceiving others. Okay, and this is a big week for that because the sun is really like out kind of, I just like literally want to say out for blood. And Aries season is the time to get things done. And <coughs> coming out of that Pisces season where we felt like we couldn't get anything done is very difficult. So just kind of allow yourself to take a step back. Know that not everything is permanent and everything is figure outable. Okay. And then the sun will be trying, trining um, Jupiter on April 14th. So there is optimism towards the end of the week. So I kind of feel like looking long term in, into um, the end of the week and allowing yourself to remember that things always will turn out the way that they're supposed to. But um, like this is a week of being an adult. And sometimes it's very hard in airy season to be an adult because we just want to go and do and be and not be bothered by like all the little idiosyncrasies of other people, right? We left that behind in Pisces season where all those idiosyncrasies were, we were being bothered by. And um, we just want to like get our shit done and do it. And so um, allow yourself to do that. But at the same time, um, watch, like don't, don't try to step over people to get to the top. Not this week. Not, not any week. Don't ever do that. But this week, it'll be really, really easy to try and do something like that. Um, because you're, you're like, you feel like you need to assert yourself in some way, shape, or form. That's what the energy is going to be wanting to do for you, is to assert yourself in some way, shape, or form. Um, remember that we are all human. Okay? All of us, were human. All right. Let's look at the cards and see what we have. For, ooh, for the week. Oh, yes. Def, definitely have to get that card, right? It could get messy. This week could definitely get messy, but with um, a lot of really good effort, there's some rebuilding that needs to be done also, right? So we have rebuild. This is the tower. This is Pluto. This is Mars. This is Aries energy with Scorpio energy crumbling down, right? So, and then we have dedicated effort. This is the eight of pentacles. So I feel like if you just keep your head down and, you know, if the, if the chaos ensues, let the chaos ensue. I'm going to put these over here. If it happens, it happens. 
It doesn't have to be so dramatic. You can, um, yeah, there's going to be a lot of petty fighting. You can be the bigger person. Yes. Ten of pentacles, five of wands, and the ten of cups. See what I mean? There's going to be, like, you want to get to the top. You want to get to where you want to go. You want to see all the beautiful things that are happening in your life and how you're getting there and what you're doing to do it. Um, but there are going to be some people that are going to fight you along the way because they don't like to see how you're getting to the top. And this week is going, like, people are going to show their asses this week. I mean, that's really the only way to put it. People will show, show their asses this week. So how do you stay away from that? You um, be the bigger person. You get humble. You know your place. And you don't start the fight, right? The Page of Pentacles does not start the fight. The Page of Pentacles is a teacher or a student. The Page of Pentacles is a student. Um and if you want to start new things, this week would be a really good time for you to start new things. I feel like um, allowing you to internalize heavy emotions. Like if you feel yourself needing to pull back, right? We have the Queen of Cups and the Hermit. If you feel yourself needing to pull back because you're really super emotional, that's okay. Like don't feel like you have to always be in the middle of every because the airy season makes you want to be like in the middle of everything. If you feel like you need to pull back right now, it's okay. The um the 6 of pentacles is asking you where you're placing your your energy. Again, like I said, um your energy is more important than their ego. There is no reason for you to give more of your energy for a fight that probably won't be solved anyways. So allowing yourself to, to pull back, allowing yourself to take a step back and not sit in the ego of somebody else is, a, is huge. So the 10 of pentacles. I feel like I gave too much information about the whole reading thing for May. <laughs> Okay, so Ten of Swords. Um, some things are going to have to end for you to get to the Ten of Pentacles, and that's just the reality of things. I kind of feel like it's time for a lot of us to recognize that the worst is the worst is behind us. This week may not be the best week for you to be able to realize that. If you feel like you've been through a battle... It's all for a purpose. It's all for a reason. This Ten of Pentacles, or this Ten of Swords, for me, the Ten of Swords is like going to the worst possible case scenario. So what does that mean? That means um, you, somebody says, I'm going to text you when I get somewhere, and then they don't text you, so you think they're dead in a ditch on the side of the road, going to the worst possible case scenario. So whatever it is that has to fall away, whatever it is that has to um, fall by the wayside in order for you to get to your Ten of Pentacles lifestyle that's what needs to happen. There are a lot of endings that are happening this week, and I think that there are going to be a lot of petty arguments in between that. But whatever it is that needs to fall away, it's not as bad as it seems. It feels really bad at the time, and maybe for some people it is really bad. But there's there's better on the other side of it. There is so much more on the other side of it. Uh, let's see what the Five of Wands is. Whoa. Yeah, some of you are fighting in relationships. Two of Cups on the Five of Wands. This could be petty arguments. I don't feel like this is anything. Um, there could be that there are arguments that are going to end some relationships. The Two of Cups doesn't have to be romantic. It could be friendships too. But it's like you had this really close bond with somebody. You had this really close connection and bond with a person. And all of a sudden, they're not on the same page and that could be for a lot of reasons it could be that you guys aren't vibrating on the same level anymore that happens it happens in the best of relationships it happens in the best of friendships um maybe it was in a, maybe the maybe if it was a romantic relationship it was an illusion 
Like you really thought that things were going to turn out one way and they, and you fought for it and fought for it and fought for it and it didn't turn out. And now you're having to really come to, cause this week can be about a lot of realizations of things that you have had an ego battle with and now they're falling by the wayside because you wanted to be, you know, Pisces season, it was an illusion. Maybe you started a relationship during Pisces season and everybody was really happy and go lucky and everything was wonderful and lovely and la di da di da um, And now that the reality of Aries season is here, I don't know. I feel like all of this is just giving you some strength, some inner strength. It's possible. It's possible that all the fighting, all of the things that have to fall by the wayside, all of the things that have to be undone in your life is actually giving way to much better things. And your happiness relies on your inner strength. That's what these two cards are really saying. Your ultimate Ten of Cups happiness relies on your inner strength and not the strength from, from outwards. Right? Not from the material strength from the outside world. It relies on everything that's coming from within. So this could be a week that will humble you. The Page of Pentacles is a very humble person. Um, sometimes the Page of Pentacles can be seen as like the fuckboy. Um, but I feel like in this case, this is all about getting humbled. And the only way that you can make all of your wishes and all of your dreams come true is if you take a step back and you let your energy do the talking and not your ego. Don't let your mouth do the talking. Let the energy, because people are going to see your energy when you first walk into, before you even open up your mouth, people will feel your energy. People will see whether you're a humble human being, a humble person, or if you're somebody who is just ready for a fight. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. I'm telling you, it could have been a lot worse. It's not as bad. Um, six of Pentacles. Where are you giving your energy? That's another thing you're going to need to ask yourself when you, when you humble. Because if you want to manifest everything in your life, you cannot deplete yourself. And I feel like a lot of us are learning the very hard question, the very hard lesson. Saturn, thank you very much. Sun and Saturn square on Wednesday. Um, we're learning the hard lesson of um, am I giving my energy to people, places, and things where it is making me feel like I am less than five of pentacles, right? I'm giving so much of myself that I don't even feel like I'm myself anymore. I feel like a lot of people are going through that hard lesson right now. And that's okay. That is, I mean, it's totally okay, but you've got to be aware of it. You have to be aware that it's happening and change that because you can't manifest your life if you're constantly giving your energy to people, places. I call them situationships, right? If, it, if you're in a relationship, but you're, it's, it's so one-sided, it's a situation ship. It's true. One sided relationship, situation ship. And I think that internal, I think that on the inside, people know that in order for them to build things in their life in a very stable, grounded kind of way, they got to let things crumble. And how do you let things crumble? You get really honest with yourself. Get really humble. You let things fall away that need to fall away. And the hermit on the Queen of Cups is really, the hermit and the Queen of Cups is really saying, go within. Look at all of that emotional capacity that you have and allow yourself to give it back to yourself. The only way the hermit can stay strong, because they don't have the shell like a crab does, the only way the hermit can stay strong is by accepting that they have those emotions and giving back to themselves first. That's how a hermit stays strong. 
So let's clarify the Queen of Cups and the Hermit together. Woo, yes. Yes. The world on the Queen of Cups and the Hermit. If you don't know what cycle you're ending by now, ending, 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 10, 10, 10, the tower and the world. If you don't recognize that you are in a place where there are so many cycles that are ending in your life, or there's one particular cycle that's ending in your life, if you're not in a place where you're recognizing that yet, get there. You need to humble yourself. You need to stop blaming everybody else for how you're feeling. Because when you start taking control and responsibility of your own emotions and realizing that everything that you're feeling is what you allow, that's when you can start manifesting everything you've ever wanted. That's when you can stop fighting with other people. That's when you can stop fighting with yourself. This week is going to be a very eye-opening, I think, because there will be a lot of ego battles. And in order to get rid of ego battles, you got to get honest with yourself. You got to, I mean, there's been the death of the ego for several weeks now, several weeks. I think that there have been ego deaths within twin flame situations, relationships. I think there have been ego deaths um, with with a lot of light workers, a lot of people that are coming into their spiritual awakening now, there are a lot of ego deaths happening. So let it fall. Let the tower fall. It doesn't mean it's the end of the world. It's probably not comfortable. Nothing ever really is comfortable. If you're, if you're afraid of being uncomfortable, I hate to tell you, life is not easy. <laughs> welcome to it all right guys i love you all take very good care of yourselves oh just to recap with the readings if you want to get a reading with me um there are only 15 more readings general re or personal readings that i'm accepting for april after april 30th i'm only going to do a limited number of general of uh personal readings um, I still will be on YouTube. I'm still going to be doing all of the general readings. In fact, I'm going to start doing the soulmate readings this week. So we're going to have all the soulmate readings out. And then we'll start with Taurus season. So, um, but if you want to get a personal reading, now is the time to do it. I can't promise you that you'll be able to get one in May. I love you guys. Have a great week. Bye.